This is a CMake crash course. In this video, I'll cover how to install CMake, what CMake does and how it fits into the software development picture, how to use CMake to build a simple project, how to use CMake variables, how to build executables and libraries with CMake, how to link to libraries that are part of the project, how to use CMake with subdirectories within a project, and how to include external or third-party libraries. We we'll use the following commands and variables. The first thing you want to do with CMake is install it. On Linux, that's easy. Just sudo apt install CMake. In my case, it's already installed. You can get the version number by typing CMake dash dash version. I'm running 3.16. In the past, programs were built with make files. At least that was one way to build them. With a make file, you'd have a file called make file, and it would have a target and it would have the commands to build the program, something like this. So we run G++ and we output main from main.cpp. And when I call make, it builds my program. And now I can run it main. CMake makes make files. It produces make files. CMake project is create a CMake lists.txt file. And it's capital C M and a capital L on lists. There's three lines you need. We need CMake minimum required, which is the version of CMake that this CMake file supports. And I don't know what the version is. We'll look that up in a minute. We need a project name and we need to tell it what to build. So we're going to tell it to add an executable and we'll call it my program and then we need to give it the source files to build the program which in this case is just main.cpp. So the version of CMake can be found from the command line CMake dash dash version. In my case it's 3.16. So let's just change my version to match my current version of CMake. Maybe earlier versions of CMake would also work but since I'm using 3.16 I'm just going to use 3.16. Now the recommended practice for building a CMake project is to not build it in the current directory, but rather create a build directory for all your build output. So I'm going to make a build directory and then we'll build all the files in this build directory. To do that, to configure the CMake project, I just call CMake and give it the path to the CMake list file that is the top level for my project. So in this case, that's the parent directory. It then configures the CMake project and writes out uh, a number of files, one of which is a make file. And this is an auto-generated make file by CMake that I can then use with my make command. Then if I call make, it uses that make file to build the project. And when I look again, I have my program, which is my executable. So I can now run my program and there it says, hello world. Now one of the things that the project command does is set some variables in CMake. So for example, when I say project my project, it sets a variable called project name. And I can use that variable in other places. So instead, if I want my executable to be the same name as my project, I can replace my program with the name project name. And the way you use variables in CMake is you enclose them in a dollar sign and an open close brace, just like this. So now when I build my project, you'll see I have a program called my project. Now it didn't delete my program because even though I changed it, it doesn't delete what's already there. It just makes the new program. So I'll go ahead and remove my program and my project. And we'll build it one more time and you'll see that it creates my project. So there's two main kinds of outputs that CMake produces. One is an executable, which you can create by saying add executable. The other is a library, which you can create by saying add library. Then you give it the name of the library and the name of the source files. So let's go ahead and create that library. Mm -hmm. 
and let's build it. So now you can see in the output it says it's linking the static library lib mylib.a and linking the CX exec executable my project. Now when we look in the directory, we see my project is here and also this new file lib mylib.a. So .a means it's a static library, which means it's going to be compiled directly into whatever code links to it. If it were a dynamic library, it would be linked at runtime. So we can change static and dynamic. It defaults to static and you can type it in to make it explicit or you can tell it to make a shared library by typing in shared. Now if I say shared and we rebuild, it's created libmylib.so, which is the shared object file. So now it's a dynamic library or a shared library. So now let's say we actually wanted to use this library with our program. Well, we need to call the function. So instead of calling this, we'll call print hw. Now right now, it doesn't know where to find print hw. I've made no header file. So let's create the header file for uh, libhw. Now if I try to build this right now, it fails because it says undefined reference to print hw. The reason why is because the linker can't find the function print hw. I've included the header file, but I haven't told the linker to link to the object file. So to do that, we need to edit our CMake list file. We need to tell it to link to the library that we've just created. So we say target link libraries. We tell it the target, which is our executable and we tell it which library to link to. In this case, it's mylib. So the name of the library here is the same as the name of our library's target in CMake. Now when we build it, it finds and links to the library correctly, and when I run the program, it does the right thing and prints out the hello world message. So let's say instead my library wasn't located in the same directory as the rest of my source, but instead I had a library directory uh, that it was inside of. Now what I can do is include that subdirectory in my CMake list file and it'll look for a CMake list file in the library directory. So instead of adding the library here, instead we will add the subdirectory lib. And inside the lib directory, we'll make a CMake list file that tells it how to build the things in that directory. So the error here that it can't find the header file is because although we've built the library, we haven't told CMake where to find the header files. And in this case, if you look, the header files are in the lib directory along with the source files for lib. What we want to do is export the, that directory as part of the search path for header files in this project. So to do that, we have a command in CMake called target include directories. We give it the target name and then we give it what directories to look for. Now there's already a CMake variable for the current directory, it's called CMake current source directory. There's one more thing we want in here, a keyword that can be private, public, or interface. They have different meanings and they're similar to the C++ meanings for private, protected, and public. In this case, if this was a real library, I would probably want to use interface because I'm providing this as an interface. The header file acts as an interface to the user of this library. So we're gonna go ahead and leave interface in there. We'll explain this more in a minute. And now when we build, it's able to find the header file and build the project. So there's three keywords. We have private, public, and interface in target include directories. 
So private means that it's used for the current target, which in this case is mylib, because that's what's specified in the target include directories command. But it's not used by dependencies of mylib or other parts of the program that use mylib. Public means it's used by both mylib and the dependencies. Interface means it's used by only the dependencies and isn't needed for mylib. So in this case, interface is the right choice because mylib knows where to find lib.h. It's in the current directory with the source files, so it doesn't need to know where to find those. But other dependencies that would use mylib need to know where to find those header files. So we want to make this an interface. Now the other thing you're going to want to do is include existing system libraries into your project. So let's talk about that next. Let's say that we have libfmt installed and we'd like to use that. Right now if we try to build it says it can't find the function. It's an undefined reference to the function because we haven't linked to it properly. So what we need to do is find the package called FMT. And then we add it to our list of link libraries. And in this case, FMT is added as FMT colon colon FMT. You can find out how to include packages usually from the package owners themselves or from CMake's website. Just Google CMake and the name of your package and usually it's one of the first links. In this case we don't want building the library, we want usage with CMake. So we have find package FMT, target link libraries, your target, and then FMT colon colon FMT. So let's go back and use that. Now when we build, it finds the library properly and it works. If you'd like to use a specific C++ standard to compile your code, like C++11 or C++17, you can set some variables that will allow you to do that. So in particular, we have set CMake CXX standard. In this case, I've set it to C++20. And then there's these two other variables. We have CMake CXX standard required and CMake CXX extensions. CXX standard required means that if it doesn't support the requested standard, it will decay to a previous standard if the compiler supports it. So if it doesn't support 20, but the compiler supports 17, then it will try to compile the code with 17. Um, unless you specify, yes, it's required, then it must support C20. Uh, and so it will only use the C++20 standard flag. The CXX extensions allows you to specify whether or not you want to use automatically the extensions of a particular compiler. So for example, in G++, there's additional options that are available with the GNU C++ compiler, G++, than are available in the C++ standard. So turning this on would allow you to pull in those C++ standards. So in general, the recommendation is to set all three of these variables when you set a standard. And so we would set the standard, we would turn standard on, uh, standard required to yes, and turn the extensions to off to make it the most portable.